This study was commissioned by the City of Gold Coast Council as part of its Urban Greening 2030 strategy. The purpose of the study is to collect baseline data about the impacts of climate change on residents in a suburban environment and how they might shape Council's adaptation strategies. So our findings are directly feeding into Council's strategies around urban greening and will provide us, Jason says, a baseline for future measurement which can be done on an annual or five-year basis. We're here at uh, Upper Coomera, which is loca located in Gold Coast City in southeast Queensland in Australia. Uh, Gold Coast City has been identified by the IPCC as a hotspot for climate change impacts. So as we move further into the 21st century, Gold Coast City is going to see and experience much more severe climate change impacts. Our study had two purposes. The first purpose was to look at how marginalised and disadvantaged residents might be disproportionately exposed to increased energy costs related to cooling their houses. The second aspect was to undertake the study in a rigorous way. Much environmental justice research has been criticised for not controlling for a wide variety of variables such as undertaking research at a postcode level rather than a specific neighbourhood level and not thinking about people's attitudes and values and how they might affect behaviours. So our study asked the following research questions. Are marginalised and disadvantaged residents aware of climate change? Are marginalised and disadvantaged residents concerned about climate change? And do marginalised and disadvantaged residents understand the potential for green infrastructure as a means of adapting to climate change? For this study, we conducted a mailbag survey of Upper Coomera. The surveys were distributed to 1,921 households in the study site. Upper Coomera was selected as the case study because it is part of the uh, Urban Growth Corridor. The Gold Coast is the sixth largest city and is expected to double in the next 30 years. One of the perhaps unsurprising interaction effects that we found between the variables was that people who had higher levels of awareness of climate change were also more likely to take action to adapt to the expected impacts of climate change. So for example, people who had a higher level of anthropocentric belief were also more likely to take action such as using ceiling fans rather than air conditioning to combat climate change impacts. We found that people living in townhouses like the one behind or households with energy efficient appliances and people with a greater anthropocentric belief were more likely to be worried about climate change. Understanding of the potential of green infrastructure to adapt to climate change impacts and what we found was that despite a high proportion of residents recognizing the potential for trees to provide shade, surprisingly only a little over half understood the potential for trees to deal with extreme temperatures and reduce ambient air temperatures. A little under half uh, understood the potential for green infrastructure and tree planting to produce beneficial health impacts. This is one of the first studies of its kind in the world outside of North America to look at suburban environments and to look at green infrastructure as an aspect of thermal inequality. And it's also one of the first studies to take that approach and specifically link it to the conceptual construct of uh, climate justice. The study is also significant because we can look at residents' household practices, specifically about how they're adapting to thermal inequality and scale this up from the local level to inform not just local council policies, but state government and national policies around climate change adaptation. <laughs>